This was the best week of meals ever. Hi everyone, Jennifer here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. In my Meals of the Week video this week, I am sharing four hits. This was the best week of meals ever. Everyone in my family agreed. There was only one meal that some of the kids weren't that happy about, but Ben and I loved everything and I'm really excited to share this week's meals with you because I believe that meal planning is a homemaker must. All right, so let's just dive right into the meal plan for this week. This week we did French dip au jus sandwiches with homemade French fries in the air fryer. I'm gonna to talk to you about what inspired me to do that dish when I make it. I also made mushroom and spinach goat cheese tarts, Moroccan style tilapia with a very fresh fruit salsa, and finally I made marry me chicken, which is something that I have been wanting to make for a long time, and I finally did it. So let's have a look at the grocery list of what I needed to buy this week. Okay, so having a look here at the groceries that I needed to get, I got some mushrooms, broccoli, Potatoes, you know the potatoes I grew didn't quite perform, so I have to buy my own potatoes still. Um, mango and cilantro, that's another thing that I tried to grow that didn't quite work out. I got some more lemons and um, some basil because that's another herb that didn't quite work out for me. I got some smoked provolone cheese for the French dips. Uh, some more eggs, goat cheese, heavy cream, and Parmesan. Then for the meats, I got a chuck roast, some tilapia, chicken and some sausage. Ben likes to cook up bratwurst, so I usually don't show what he makes, but he usually cooks up some one meal a week at least. And so uh, we like to get the bratwurst when we shop at Costco because we'll have that with some uh, mashed potatoes, kind of like a bangers and mash. Then I got some beef consomme, some beef broth. I actually had both of these in the pantry, but because I was using them for this uh, meal, I decided to stock up and replenish that supply. Um, I did not make my own pie crust. I could have done so, but it was a busy week, so I bought my own pie crust. Hoagie rolls. I had to replenish my herbs, so sage and coriander. I had them, but they were quite old, and I just wanted to get fresh ones. Raisins and sun-dried tomatoes. I ended up purchasing a few of these, and I will do that. I don't just buy one just to use for the recipe. I buy a few jars uh, to keep so that in the future, I don't have to buy them if I need them. So sometimes you'll say, oh, your grocery bill was so small. Well, it's because I stock my pantry really well. And oftentimes I'll only need to get um, some fresh things and maybe even the meats. Not even that, because I stock my freezer with meats. But because we were going to Costco, I wanted to take advantage of that. And I bought the two chuck roasts. They come in one packet. There's a lot of fish that comes in a packet. And, um, some chicken, which I also had here, but again, I'm prepping and I wanted to just keep adding to my uh, supply and then Ben's brats. So that is what the grocery list looked like this week. All right, so the grocery totals this week were a little murky. I actually did a Costco order and I stocked up my prepper pantry and that's going to be something that I'm going to talk about uh, this month on the channel. So my grocery bill was a lot higher than it normally was. It was over $500. But the meals for this week certainly didn't amount to that. It's tricky when you shop at Costco because I bought a chuck roast, for example, and there's two in one packet, so you have to divide it by two. Also, I got the goat cheese from Costco. It was two huge packs, and I only used about three quarters of one pack. So you really have to divide into what the cost is to see what each meal costs. Um, but I do like to shop at Costco to stock my pantry and um, I'll buy these ingredients that I will use for other meals. So for example, with the goat cheese, I use some of that in salads and in other things um, on top of pizzas and that type of thing this week. Without further ado, let's get into the meals for this week. All right, let's start with the French dip au jus with homemade French fries in the air fryer. So we're gonna start off with some chuck roast here and I'm going to just sear it in my cast iron skillet. This is about just over two pounds. And I just season the outside of the chuck roast with salt and pepper. Now, I'm in my pajamas because I'm doing this in the morning. You're gonna be putting this in the slow cooker and it will be cooking all day long. So I'm just going to sear both sides here and you can just flip it over. As you can see, it gets really messy. Now this is how I start my famous pot roast recipe, which I'm sure I will share with you at some point this fall. 
um, but it's just an excellent way uh, to just sear in the flavor before you put it into the slow cooker. So then I'm going to place my chuck roast into the slow cooker. I'm going to add some sliced onions, one can of beef consomme, one can of beef broth, a tablespoon of soy sauce, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, and that is it. I'm just going to cook this on low in the slow cooker for about eight hours. That's why I'm doing it early in the morning so it can be ready by dinner time. Okay, now I'm going to be making some homemade french fries and I have this handy uh, french fry slicer. So I'm just gonna get my potatoes and put them in there. I wash the potatoes and scrub them, but I do not skin them because I like the skin on my potatoes. And I'm just going to soak these in some water for about 15 minutes. And then when they are finished soaking, I'm just going to pat them dry and return them to the bowl after draining them. Now I'm just going to add in some oil along with some paprika, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. And I will have the recipe down below. So Ben and I love going to Houston's restaurant. And every time I go, I always get the French dip. Always, I just love it so much. So we haven't been to Houston's since the lockdown and I was really craving this French dip. So I was really excited about this dinner. I'm just going to mix the fries together and then I'm going to put them in my air fryer, which I had previously preheated on 380 degrees for five minutes. So in go the fries. And I only put about half of them in because I made so many. You don't wanna load it too much. So I'm going to do this in two batches. And then I just press the French fry button on the air fryer and it cooks them perfectly. You do have to shake them halfway in between. So I held off for a long time on getting the air fryer. I finally got one. My mother-in-law loves hers. And then I watch Kristen Stepp's YouTube channel and she loves her air fryer and is always using it. So I finally got it. And I have no idea what I'm doing here, but I'm just dancing to the music. <laughs> so at the end of the day, this is what the roast looks like. And um, you can see all of those lovely juices there. I'm just going to shake my fries. We're halfway through. And then I'm going to place the roast after shredding it and some of the onions on hot buttered hoagie rolls. I didn't show that part. And I put some smoked provolone cheese on them, put them back in the oven, and that is the dinner. So I know it doesn't look that good. This doesn't really look good, but trust me, it is so delicious. The au jus juices are from the slow cooker. It's just the leftover juices from the roast. And you can dip your French dip into the au jus. And then of course I have those delicious looking French fries from the air fryer. So they're not as naughty as if they were deep fried. And I like to dip those into ketchup and I serve this with a side of grapes. So this was absolutely outstanding. The whole family loved this dish. Ben and I really loved it. It reminded us of what we usually get when we go to Houston's. Okay, next I'm going to be making a broccoli goat cheese tomato tart. So I know I said it was a mushroom spinach tart in the introduction, but I was wrong. I don't know. I always write the wrong thing on my meal plan. <laughs> but basically right now I'm just going to be sauteing some mushrooms until they get really soft in some oil. And I'm also steaming some broccoli. I'd actually purchased fresh broccoli, but it wasn't that good. So I decided to use frozen. Now I'm just placing a pie crust into my deep dish pie pan. You can of course make your own crust, but on a busy weeknight, I'll probably just use a ready-made one and it turns out just fine. So into a separate bowl, I'm going to be adding the mixture that's going to go over the sauteed vegetables. And initially I made enough for a regular pie tin, but I forgot I'm actually using a deep dish pie pan. So I ended up having to double this. So I ended up using four eggs here. And of course I will leave the recipe for you down below. I'm just using some sage and um, some other spices, salt and pepper. Everything will be down below for you. And I'm just going to mix this all together with some heavy whipping cream. And then I'm just going to put my sauteed vegetables into the bottom of my deep dish pie pan. And I'm just going to pour 
that egg and cream mixture with the herbs over the top. Now I'm just going to take one of our garden tomatoes, which I'm so proud of. You know me, I love my beefsteak tomatoes. And I'm just going to slice up this tomato and just arrange it artfully on top of this uh, beautiful tart. Now I'm just going to crumble some goat cheese on top of that. And I just brush the side of the pastry with an egg wash so that it browns nicely. So I pop this in the oven and I start off by putting this little ring around the pie to protect the crust and then I take it off for the last 15 to 20 minutes of cooking. And this is what it looks like. It was really delicious. Uh, we absolutely loved it, Ben and I, and I served it with a side salad with some croutons, some walnuts, cranberries, and poppy seed dressing. So Ben and I absolutely loved this. We thought it was so delicious. Our older children liked it too, but the little ones weren't as thrilled, maybe because of all the vegetables, I'm not sure, but I'm definitely going to make it again. I love making a variation on this tart all year long, so this is a keeper for us. And I just wanna show you the next day we had leftovers with some pork and beans, some mac and cheese, and some more sliced tomatoes. Now I'm going to make some Moroccan tilapia with a gorgeous fruit salsa. This is inspired by a recipe in Robin Miller's Quick Fix Meals, which is one of my favorite cookbooks. But I changed it a lot as I'm apt to do, so I just wanted to share the cookbook with you. But then this recipe has really been made into my own because I use a lot of different things in the salsa. So you're gonna start off by taking your fish fillets and seasoning them with salt and pepper. Then you're gonna create the Moroccan rub just by combining some ground coriander with some ground cumin, about one tablespoon of each. And this is where I got the idea from Robin Miller because she suggests this rub and it's so delicious. You're just going to rub this all over the fish once you've put the salt and pepper on and just really get it in there. Now whenever I show tilapia, I always get people who complain and warn me about it and how I shouldn't eat it. And I totally understand you don't need to do that. We don't have tilapia that much, maybe only a few times a year. We're still alive and we really, <laughs> we really like this dish. So you don't have to use tilapia, you can use whatever fish you like to use. But I find that tilapia works really well for this recipe. So I'm just putting the Moroccan rub into the fish fillets here. And now I'm going to pan fry them in some coconut oil in my cast iron skillet. I really like to use coconut oil for this because it just adds to that lovely um, tropical flavor that we're going for with the fruit salsa. That's the cookbook I'm talking about, such a good cookbook. Okay, so now I'm going to chop up my herbs and I have a lot of cilantro here and I'm just chopping it up in my little herb chopper that I have. And I'm going to show you all the fruits I'm going to use. I'm going to use mango, fig, white peach, lemon and some raisins to make a quick fruit salsa. So I'm just going to chop up everything right now and let's enjoy some music. So in Robin's dish, she only uses mango, but I like to use all different types of fruits. Whatever I have on hand, it just makes this so flavorful. And of course I had to use these amazing figs. These are from my mother's tree. So this is what the fish looks like as it's frying up. And here is the fruit salsa. And I'm just going to add the chopped cilantro to this, as well as uh, some lemon juice. And now I know how to use my lemon squeezer, but I tell you what, it's still pretty hard. I'm telling you it's hard. <laughs> it's not the easiest thing. I'm going to add some raisins as well and that adds a nice texture to the salsa. In goes the cilantro, and I save a little bit to garnish. 
And this salsa is so flavorful. You could let this sit for a few hours even, and um, it's so good. And this is what our plate looks like. And I wanted to show you, this was my plate, and I plated it on a white plate here, served it with some of our beefsteak tomatoes, some steamed broccoli, and some brown rice. Um, but I wanted to show you what Ben's plate looked like. I put it on the blue willow pattern plate that we have, and I just thought it was so beautiful. It's interesting to see how food looks on different um, plates, and I thought that his looked even better, so I wanted to show you his version. We love this dish. All the kids actually really like this dish. It's so amazing. Okay, now it's time to try Marry Me Chicken. So. I have seen this all over Pinterest, all over YouTube. I will leave a recipe link down below. But basically, I start off by shredding some Parmesan cheese. And um, here I'm just chopping some sun-dried tomatoes. And I'm just going to get my chicken. Now, a lot of the recipes use chicken thighs. I'm just using some chicken tenders that I had. And this worked just fine. So you can use some boneless, skinless chicken breasts or chicken tenders for this as well and I'm just pan frying them here in my cast iron skillet, Old Faithful, uh, dusting them with some salt and pepper, and I'm just going to sear them. They are not fully cooked through. I cook them about three to four minutes each side because I'm going to return them to the pan. So here I'm just going to add some chicken broth uh, and some garlic. I'm just adding a few herbs and again I will have the recipe link down below and into this one cup of heavy whipping cream or heavy cream now I'm going to add the sun-dried tomatoes the recipe said to add it after the chicken but I just wanted to add them before because I thought they would flavor the sauce nicely And I'm also going to add the freshly grated Parmesan cheese. And this thickens it up nicely. So I return my chicken back to the sauce and now you let it cook all the way through um, by placing this into the oven. And you're gonna place it in there until the chicken is cooked fully. So then I'm just going to put my chicken on top of some homemade mashed potatoes that I have here and we're just going to drizzle that incredible sauce all over the top this was seriously delicious this was so outstanding Ben loved this one too he liked all the dishes this week and I'm just going to put some Italian herbs on top and just grate a little more fresh Parmesan cheese and I'm telling you, it was out of this world, so good with a side salad, outstanding. So I guess they call it marry me chicken because if you make this for someone, they're gonna want you to marry them. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that it gives you meal inspiration for your family and that it shows the importance of what meal planning can do for you. It is so critical to my homemaking success if you have any meal requests or if you'd like to share a meal that you've made for your family recently, please leave it down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time on The Daily Connoisseur. Bye everyone.